All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jay Schubert. I'm a professor at Cherry University of California, and I'm delighted to have you back for Zoom into Wellness. As many of you know, this has been our ongoing uh, webcast series, really focusing on finding the balance between productivity, uh, well, really trying to find the way to, to find balance in our lives, right? So we know that what a challenging year this has been. We've had pandemics, we've had unrest, we've had fires, and really, I think it's already hard enough to take care of ourselves without all these additional features, but having them has just made it really challenging. So the MOBIC team at Torrey University of California would like to reach out and offer you ways to find peace, productivity, and harmony so we can work together to one, work, uh, build a better year, and two, keep, our, keep uh, focusing on being healthy. Tonight's topic is one that I particularly am excited about, is focusing on how we can jump into the holiday season and stay healthy. And I, I don't know about anybody else, but for me personally, it's the time of the year where I have the hardest time focusing on my health. There are many things that I enjoy during the holiday season. And while I enjoy them, they may not be particularly healthy for me. So I think and anyone could think, of, regardless of what holiday you celebrate, there may be some cultural tradition, some meal, some, something that uh, may bring you peace and joy, but may not bring you health. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about staying healthy uh, during the holidays. And I'm happy to have Ann Lee, who is a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator and a master's at education and a key member of our MOBIC team, who's going to lead us through kind of a fun and active discussion. And our moderator tonight is Russia Kiwan, who's a master's student in the um, Medical Health Sciences Program at Torrey University of California. And we're delighted to have you both help us zoom our group into wellness and into a healthy and happy holiday season. Please welcome Anne and Russia. Thank you, Dr. Schubert. Um, and hello, everybody. So happy to be here tonight and so glad you can join us, join myself, Anne Lee, and Russia Kiwan. Um, to, you know, Dr. Schubert doesn't know this, but we are having a pre-holiday party today. And so I hope you have the spirits for it because we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So first of all, oh, here's my slides. All right, there you go. Um, so I want to go to the future a little bit. About 10 years from now, in 2030, if somebody asks you, do you remember the year 2020? What would be the first thing that you can think of? And I want you to please type in your answers in the chat because um, you know, we will have a lot of questions. So keep your hands on the keyboard. Just type in your answers in the chat. Okay, it looks like some of the answers are coming in. So it sounds like there's like social distancing, COVID, um, I'm gonna put scary, completing a master's degree despite COVID. Oof. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to stay healthy, staying healthy. Mass, there we go. I'm not sure what that word is. Can somebody help me out? Okay. All right, well, thank you for um, thinking of that. Is there any more coming in? Sanitizer, okay, good. Somebody had a new shoulder. <laughs> um, the year that you spend a lot of time with my family, okay. All right, good. So sometimes like we have heard, you know, the word scary or 
um, you know, society. It's kind of a gloomy this year. I think a lot of people are not having a good year this year. Um, there are definitely a lot of challenges that we have to go through in the year 2020. Now, I believe that in every bad situation, there's always a silver lining and there's always hope and there are always good things that come with, you know, even a really bad year. Some of you have mentioned that you, know, you got a new shoulder. It's great. Um, or you're spending more time with family. I don't know that I guess can be positive or negative. Um, but there's always good that would come with any bad year. And I know a lot of people might um, be even dealing with illness or grief if they lose a family member this year. Uh, but hopefully, you know, we can find at least some time to take care of ourselves and some time to stay happy and you know, things will get better. So it's a little bit different this year, right? I think we can all agree to that. What have you adapted to since March? A little bit of time, type it in the chat. Asha, if you can help me see if anything comes in, let me know, that'd be great. Anything? Uh, yes, we do have a few. Um, we have we have Zoom, we have teleworking, working from home, online shopping, mastering online shopping, um, you know, figuring out hobbies at home, DIYs, <laughs> a lot of working from home. <laughs> okay, great. So some of these are, you know, what you have mentioned too, right? The social social distancing, staying six feet apart, maybe just ordering takeouts from restaurant and not eating from them, not eating inside the restaurant, I mean, um, working from home or going to school from home. Uh, you know, the coronavirus that you've heard of, the hand sanitizer, the masks. So all of these are what you've adapted to since March. What else? Right? There's some that might be a little bit, you know, out of the box. We might start to notice how people put their masks on or how they actually do use their face shields. What kind of face shields they are? Look at me, yeah, that's a little funny. Um, do you remember these? Right? It happened back in March or, you know, March, April. The grocery shelves were going empty. Um, People are running out of toilet paper. My goodness, like that's one paper product that you know, everyone needs at home. Um, has anyone cut their hair, cut their own hair? Or have maybe a family member that's not experienced in, in cutting hair to cut your hair? <laughs> so these are some new things that we might have adapted to. Um, or if uh, your connection stops for a minute or two, we panic. Like what is going on? That's something that we depend on a lot in March. Uh, we might buy more food each time we go to the grocery store. Don't want to get in line for another two hours again if we don't have so, um, kind of making these big grocery stops. Uh, working from home or maybe turning the dining room into a workstation. Um, so that has happened to a lot of families. Now I put this here because I have seen a lot of creative ways for people to press the button. Just to cross the street. Um, I, I don't know what you have seen, but I have seen knees, toes, elbows, whatever people can use or stick or whatever they have um, to press the button to cross the street. These are some new habits that, you know, we might've picked up during this pandemic. So if it had been any other year, what would you be doing now to prepare for the holidays? Okay. If it had been any other year, what would you be doing now to prepare 
prepare for the holiday. So please type that in chat and we'll read them out. In that chat. Russia, do you mind reading them out? Sure. It seems like there's a lot of things people would be doing now. It seems like people want to, you know, make lots of cookies, getting groceries for Thanksgiving, bringing out recipes for Thanksgiving, packing to drive to see my family in Oregon, traveling, decorating, uh, making travel plans to visit family in other states slash countries, <laughs> baking pies, visiting family, preparing for a birthday party, and waiting for an invitation. All right, nice. Um, so yeah, so you guys are doing a lot during you know, this season normally in any other year, like preparing like all these things that you've talked about, right? There might be some work parties too that you may start to attend um, starting this time. Um, some people are going on vacation, like you know, packing for it. Uh, some people might be going to the malls and do some shopping, um, making cookies. So yeah, so these are definitely very traditional holiday works before you know the Thanksgiving time. Um, I think I've made one mistake one year to go to the grocery store on a Wednesday after work. That was a big mistake. I didn't realize how busy, crazy busy the grocery store was. Um, so then I never did that again after that year, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, you know, everybody is trying to get ready for the holidays. So I'm going to do a little poll here. Um, and the poll is what is your plan to celebrate the holidays this year? So A is the extended family are with us in a quarantine bubble together. So we plan on getting together to have our usual party. B, just celebrating with immediate family. C, I will be alone because I don't live close to family. D, I don't know yet. E, other. And I'm going to start the poll so you can actually click on it. I hope it works. <laughs> All right. So in a little bit, I'll close the poll and then we can see um, what the result is. So it looks like most of you voted already. Okay. Are you able to see the results? I I'm, I'm, I'm able to see it. Would you oh. like me to share it? Sure, please. It seems like most people would be doing B. Um, no one is doing A or C, which is good. All right, good, good. And I'm glad that some of you don't know yet. So we can talk about some <laughs> options on what you can do and also options what you can do with your immediate family. All right, well, thank you so much for participating in that poll. Um, so the 2020 events, there are so many of them this year, uh, have a lot of people feeling down and restricted you know, so many people are asking, like, can we at least enjoy the holidays? Uh, being different doesn't mean you cannot enjoy it. So just because, you know, there might be so many things that we could not do that we normally do in the past, we can make some changes and we can develop some new habits and new games and things to do. Um, yes, absolutely, we can enjoy the holidays and it will start today with all of you here. Um, but before we talk about, you know, how to have some holiday fun this year, so let me just check in with Russia real quick. Are there any questions? Um, we don't have any. We're good. Okay. Awesome.
So as you may have heard, Solano County, or a lot of counties in California, actually went back to the purple tier. Um, so the CDC is suggesting that it is safest to stay home and celebrate with just your household, which a lot of you are planning to do, so that's, that's great. But those guidelines do change all the time. So please, if you are planning on anything or you, you know, get an invitation from a friend to go to their house, check the CDC guidelines, check the local county guidelines um, before you start to make any decisions on what you may be doing. So if you must travel, please plan ahead. And like I said, you know, check the guidelines and your destinations quarantine guidelines, because a lot of them, they will have guidance for visitors to uh, quarantine for 14 days before you venture out. Um, and especially be prepared to protect yourself and those who may be sitting close to you while you're traveling. And after you travel, monitor yourself for symptoms for 14 days. And there are definitely more details in these guidelines. I'm not going to go over all of them. But Please do check the guidelines if you are planning to travel. All right, so holiday fun. That is something that, you know, should be in every celebration. So these are the typical ingredients for holiday fun. We need food, we have family, and festive act activities. So when we are going to go into them and go over each one. Well, first of all, food. Right? Woo. Important, important. Oh, that is the highlight of the holidays. Right? Dr. Schubert mentioned earlier that sometimes doing certain things may not be that great for you, but we can't miss food. So tell me about your favorite traditional holiday foods. What are your favorite traditional holiday foods. Please type them in the chat. See any of them coming in, Russia? I do see a few. I see um, mashed potatoes, string bean casserole, yams, shrimp cocktail, ham, frog eye salad, collard greens, fried turkey and cornbread dressing. Yams again and chocolate. <laughs> oh, we got okay. more. We got mac and cheese and sweet potato pies and ice cream. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Great. These are, yeah, definitely a lot of favorite traditional holiday foods. It's usually that's the one thing that most people look forward to when they get to the holidays. So maybe this is just, you know, a picture of some of them. Uh, so sometimes it's just, you know, colorful decorated foods like those dinner rolls with, um, you know, red and green. Uh, people might like making cookies and start decorating them. Does anyone like, like eggnogs during, you know, the holiday season? Um, ham, you know, candy bars that people might make, pecan pies. I hope you're eating dinner while you're watching this webinar because this is definitely making me hungry uh, or a turkey dinner like what you some of you have said might like the uh, mashed potatoes or the sweet potato pies like those are definitely all traditional um, holiday foods. So what is your plan for holiday foods this year? If you're celebrating with your immediate family. We don't really know yet so you might go shopping in the next couple of days. Um, what is your plan for holiday foods this year? I think they're still coming in. There's a few. There's um, someone's not doing a turkey this year. Um, someone's doing stuffed acorn squash, cauliflower stuffing. Uh, someone's having a protein bar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jello salad. Looks 
Ooh, sounds salad. interesting. Mm. Baked whole chicken and duck. Whoa, sounds really good. Got the chicken stuffed in the duck. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering too. <laughs> Someone's having pizza. Pizza's always good. <laughs> Someone's having a sweet potato casserole and pizza now. Oh, they're having pizza right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> All right. So good. So you have that one, you know, item in mind. Just exchanging traditional foods with a neighbor from our doorsteps. All right. Oh yeah, there's more. There's also a peach cobbler too. Cobbler. Okay. I did see a lot of, you know, dessert type things, which is part of my favorite holiday food too. Um, it's great. So if you worry about gaining weight during the holidays every year, this is the year. This is the year we can break this tradition. We don't have to have the whole spread of holiday foods like we used to or go to multiple parties. Um, so that's the silver lining. That's the good part of, you know, having to be social distancing. Really focus on what you love, certain foods that you might, you might not want to miss. But this is the year that we can break that tradition. Maybe we won't gain as much weight this year. So there are many different ways you can celebrate with food in your household. Um, I've talked about that one favorite dish. Be creative, you know, if you like peach cobbler, if you like the turkey, if you like the mashed potatoes, have that, make it, you know, but make a smaller meal for less people. It's just for your immediate family. So focus on that one thing that you really, really enjoy and creatively pair it with something else to make that meal. So for example, if pie is your thing, if pumpkin pie is your favorite and you do not want to miss that during Thanksgiving, then keep it. But, you know, if you also like some stir fried vegetables, then maybe just stir fry some vegetables and have that with the pumpkin pie. And that will be your Thanksgiving celebration. Focus on that one thing that you love and pair it with something else. Um, and if you have a relative or a friend that has that secret recipe and they make that green bean casserole or sweet potato pie or mac and cheese that you just could not figure out year after year how they make it because they keep their secret and they pretend to tell you. But when you try to make it, you can never make it the same way. I don't know if any of you have family members like that that are you know, telling you the recipe, but it really doesn't come out when you try to make it yourself. So this is the year that you can use that as, as an excuse to call up that relative or friend. To, hey, you know what? Can you please really write that down for me? I miss your pumpkin pie. I miss your macaroni and cheese. I really want to make it this year and have it for my holiday. Ask them for the special secret recipe. And if you are the one holding on to that secret recipe, please share it with your family members if they ask for it. And um, you know, even consider holding a Zoom session to make it with your extended family. So you can send you know, the ingredients list ahead of time to, um, you know, to your, your family that you normally celebrate the holidays with. And on the day of Thanksgiving, just tell them, okay, just get all the ingredients by that day and um, you know, show them how you make it. And they can make it with you while on Zoom. And that way, everybody's gonna have your special sweet potato pie or your special mac and cheese you know, at home. And it will be like celebrating with um, the family member. It will be a lot of fun you know, to try to figure this out on um, on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and uh, let's see, you know, I think actually um, we can talk about this here now too. I know Russia has found something about Zoom um, 
that she wants to share with everybody. Oh yeah, so I actually found out recently that um, Zoom announced free calls without a time limit to all users from 12 a.m. this coming Thursday until 6 a.m. Friday, meaning that you can just hop on there and invite all family and friends to join you on Thanksgiving all day. So they're, they're making it very easy for you to do that. And the whole point is to just, you know, not to avoid that physical um, interaction and, re you know, reducing COVID spread. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you uh, didn't have a Zoom account before, it, it's free to sign up, but they usually would have a time limit of 40 minutes. Um, so just on Thanksgiving Day, there's no time restriction. You can have a long three hour Zoom session with your family members and, and they won't cut you off. So that's awesome. That's awesome news. All right. So um, if you like every single food that comes with the Thanksgiving dinner, not a problem. If you want to serve the entire holiday feast for your immediate family, for your smaller family, don't worry. Just try to cook a smaller amount. And many foods do freeze very well. So if you do have leftovers, just plan to freeze them in like uh, those freezer bags or um, a container. So then that way you can use them for a future meal. You know, you can make something else out of, out of those meals. Um, and I know it's, it's a lot of turkeys that usually happen, you know, during the Thanksgiving um, season. And uh, Russia found a fun fact that we thought, you know, we have to share it with this group. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be throwing a lot of numbers at you guys, but according to NRDC, each year about 200 million pounds of turkey meat is thrown out over the Thanksgiving holiday week. That's about 25 billion grams of protein never eaten. So Americans will toss approximately $282 million worth of uneaten turkey into the trash this Thanksgiving. The numbers are so big and terrifying like and it just kind of tells you like shows you like the, the silver lining of covid which is just you know saving money and being less wasteful and maybe some turkey's life will be um spared who knows <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah there's definitely a lot of turkey meat going to waste um and i can't imagine i usually save them for soups later on or you know making other things with it so i can't imagine throwing it out but i guess if you have a big one and you know you might get tired of eating it. all right alcohol is another um favorite beverage during the holiday season it does contribute to a lot of empty calories um so if people are drinking party after party after party they might be getting a lot of um, unnecessary calories on during the season. So there are a lot of ways to really make your drinks festive. Um, you can either have a herb tea, or the warm herbal tea, or just kind of make your water with a hint of the fresh fruit or vegetable that you're putting in um, and, and giving you that variety of a beverage. So instead of just plain water. So let's for, for example, um, on the bottom left corner, uh, if you want, if you celebrate your holidays uh, with the red and green colors, you can put raspberries and lime, you know, that makes a really nice refreshing beverage. Um, or on the upper left corner, there's rosemary and pomegranate seeds. Um, you can also do rosemary and watermelon. That's a, a, you know, a really nice combination as well. Um, and then at the bottom, there's some like lemon and cranberries. So let's say if you celebrate you know, blue and white color uh, during the holidays, what would you put in your water? What are some suggestions? Can you put it in the chat? We got a few. We have blueberries, 
watermelon, blue ice cubes. <laughs> There's a lot of blueberry suggestions. Yeah. Got lemon, we have cucumber, mint and lemon, cucumber, a lot of green stuff. Nice. Oh, we got raspberries too. Raspberries. And, oh, like flavor packs. Yeah, those are those are really oh. good too. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice suggestions. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many of you have had jicama. It's like a white vegetable that uh, kind of look like a potato, but um, it's got like little pointy ends. And so if you just peel off the skin, it is pure white color inside. You can either um, just cut it in pieces or you can stir fry it as well, or you can eat it raw. So they're very crunchy, like a crunchy pear texture. Um, and it's got a very, very slight hint of flavor. You can put that in water with blueberries. So it would be like, a, um, you know, blue and white if you celebrate, you know, with different colors. So you can definitely be very, very creative in making your drinks interesting. Um, it doesn't have to stick with just plain water. All right, so any comments or questions, suggestions about food before I move on to family activities? Someone suggested putting hibiscus flower in tea, which sounds really good. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I don't even know where to get them here. I guess, you know, maybe dried. Yeah. Dry hibiscus. Oh, very nice. Okay, so family. Right, that's another main thing, um, a main ingredient of the holiday season. But what do you usually do with your extended family during the holiday season? What do you usually do with your extended family during the holiday season? So there's a few so far, um, like watch a movie, play games, eat and play card games, eat and chat, go on a hike, look at old photos. It's all very nice. Oh, very good. Family parties. Nobody watches football? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Cooking together. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Schubert is saying he doesn't know what, what football is. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, what is that soccer maybe? <laughs> yeah, I know family parties, it's, it's really important to get together. Sometimes for some family members, um, you may only see them once a year during the holiday season. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to get in touch with them now, especially if they live far away, but we definitely can think of creative ways to get together. So, uh, you know, thank you for sharing this. It's from um, a middle school teacher who is very creative in trying to get the kids who are going to school at home, you know, this, this quarter, this semester for most of the middle school, high school, elementary school kids. Um, so this middle school teacher, Ms. Kep and Mr. Peters, they shared this game with me because they have these games that they play with the kids. Um, and it's uh, a chutes and ladders game. And so uh, how it works is they put this on a Google slide. So then the kids can go on the Google slide and play it together. And they have to roll a dice. So if they roll a one, they have to do three push-ups. They roll a two, two, they have to do 10 shoulder touches and they would um, uh, you know, walk while they do this. So they, they would spend their PE time kind of playing this game. And when I saw this, I was like, this can totally be a board game on Zoom and you can do it with your family member. And so um, just wanna show you how it works. 
So this is my nine-year-old daughter that's at the corner here. Um, so she, inspired by that uh, PE game, she made her own. So she made her own Chutes and Ladders game on Google Slides. So just in case, if you're not familiar with Google Slides or, um, or their, their documents, the one great feature about them is you can have five or six people or even more from different parts of the world get onto the shared document together and they can see how each other move and they can see how, um, you know, how, what happens to it. So you can make changes to it and the other person will see it in, in real life time. And so, um, so she made this Chutes and Ladders game. Of course, she took all the PE components out and put in her favorite fruits as her, uh, as her chess pieces. Um, and she made a sh really short video showing people how this is done. So I'm gonna play it here and I hope, um, let me just make sure I share the sound. Hi, this is a Toots and Ladders game I made on Google Slides. I also have a die to roll for the game on Google Sheets over here. So first you choose one of... Uh -oh. ...these pictures and drag it to the start, which is number one. Um, now you can click on whichever one of these squares and press backspace or delete on the keyboard. So let's say I got a two, then I go two steps. So one, two, now I'm on three. And let's say if I were on four, then there's a ladder here. So I go up to the, to the top of the ladder and then if it's a slide like number 16, if you're at the top of the slide, then you go down to where the slide ends. And you just keep going with rolling the dice in between your turns. And three or more people works best because then you can take turns and see who gets to the finish first. So you try to get to the finish first. Um, so, so yeah, so she made this dice that's in, I, I guess, I don't know, it comes with the Google Sheet, you can make a dice here too, so you can roll the dice, and then you can, you can walk, and this can all happen on the screen, on Zoom, if you share it, if you have like little, um, grandkids that may live far away, or if you have, even if you're an adult, if you have cousins that you used to play board games together, doesn't have to be chutes and ladders. You can probably come up with other board games that can um, have the same function. Uh, and that would be you know, a lot of fun to do it on Google uh, with the Google Drive. So, um, so there are other games too that you can come up to play with your uh, cousins and, and family and friends that are far away and definitely try to get in some physical activity during this time because hey we have some time off um maybe days off from work and we want to get a little bit more active we're trying to stay healthy so we're already eating healthier because we have less amount this year so get in more physical activity just to you know stay healthy and happy um this neighborhood bingo game it's just these are general items that most people might be able to find in different neighborhoods so if you send this out to your extended family and see, hey, how many can you come up with? Who can get a bingo first on Thanksgiving day? They can go out and just walk around the neighborhood trying to find these items to get a bingo in whatever neighborhood they're in. Um, so this is another idea that you can um, you know, work with your family on and be able to you know, have fun with it. Just come back to a Zoom later on. Um, this is another one that you can just stay at home and do, and it's just a, a rolling the dice and doing those physical activities. So that's another way to get active. If you don't want to go outside, just do it at home um, and have like a virtual meeting together. 
points and do different physical activity moves. Um, so there are a lot of different ideas that people can do to, you know, make it a fun, make it a fun day. Um, so now this is our last team meeting. And what we were trying to do is trying to put a music video together so we can show it to everybody on social media, right? So um, to, to get ready for the holidays, because many families also like to use music during their gatherings. They might sing, they may play instruments. Um, so we was going to try that and get on Zoom and everybody is trying to sing, but you know, it didn't work out very well on Zoom because it can only take one person's voice at a time. So as you can see on this screenshot here, if we only heard Dr. Sherbrooke, we didn't hear anybody else because, you know, it can only capture one voice because he's like right in the middle with that yellow square. Um, so we tried, but something that families can do is uh, if you like music, um, Sure, there's some younger family in the uh, uh, you know, younger members in the family who love playing with um, the different programs that is available on their devices, or even experienced people. It doesn't have to be younger. You know, experienced people might want to play with um, mixing and matching pieces to put together a music video, and so everybody can sing the song or play that instrument and someone in the family can try to piece it together and send it out to all the family members. So you can have a music video that's like, you know, people are all in the same room. Uh, my coworker Deanna also showed us that there's uh, something called jib jab that you can, you know, put the face on um, and uh, make music videos that way too. So that is usually a lot of fun. It looks like there's uh, someone raised their hand. Is it Saha? Saha? Yeah, I, I you, see the hand being raised too. Are you able to type your question in the chat? Or if the, if, um, well, we can get back to you later if, um, uh, if that was a mistake. Um, so yeah, so that's the music, music part of the music video. And some of you have talked about looking at pictures. I don't know about you, but I still have a lot of pictures still in albums. I know it's like a, a project for the last 13 years, um, trying to put them digitally. So, uh, so it could, this could be the year to gather everybody's photos and try to make a digital family photo album. Um, and just, you know, even ask grandma, ask aunt, whoever has these old pictures at home, put them together by the year and kind of save them all together. It looks like there is some. Um, okay. Any other uh, suggestions or any other comments that you have about doing family games? No? Nothing else? Okay. Oh, someone said um, can do outdoor family games like kickball. Yeah, for sure. Yes, definitely. Keep active. But which actually brings me to the next slide. Um, is you know there there's always room for new tradition. So starting a new tradition with your household members you know, would be a great one. What do you think would be a good one for you? What do you think would be a new tradition that you can start this year with your household members? Someone said, enjoy your yard and wildlife. Sounds good. If 
family hike. Family car ride. Go on walks with family after dinner. I think for me personally, what I would love is we can have maybe like a, you know, those like a Samsung health or, you know, like tracking, like how many steps you get. It would be nice to kind of be able to see everyone's, you know, steps for the day and you can kind of compete to see if you can like win. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Great. Someone said, sit around and laugh at YouTube fails. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> Good, a lot of good ideas. Um, so yes, yeah, so family hikes or even going on a morning walk or even playing certain board game just with your own family member that maybe you don't get a chance to play. Um, dig it out for Thanksgiving, dig it out for the holiday. Russia found something on Facebook too. Yeah, so I only have Facebook Messenger when it comes to social media, but it turns out you can um, play mini games with your Facebook friends and it's like so fun. But what you need to do is just have your video chat on and the other person too. And it's really easy. Um, you know, I played one yesterday and, you know, it had me like making basketball shots with my face as it's, it's very fun with people to play as long as they're not recording you. <laughs> yeah that's great good good very good yeah so try that out you know there are definitely a lot of virtual options um some people might tell me buying gifts is so hard this year you know if you are planning on buying gifts it it may actually be easier if you are you know purchasing online and it ships straight to their house you don't even need to worry about wrapping it dressing it up nicely you know just go straight there um, and uh, there are many, many gifts that can be very inexpensive, like grocery shop for somebody, you know, grocery shop is really a, a hassle these days. So, you know, if you offer to help people grocery shop or doing craft projects using recycled materials, many of you have mentioned that you started to do DIY projects or picking up some new craft, um, this would be a great one. Uh, sewing masks for family members, help them rake leaves, help walk their dog. Um, the most, most popular holiday, holiday gift this year is probably the toilet paper. <laughs> I think a lot of stores are running out now. Um, so, you know, if you can get them, get them. <laughs> Don't wait until you're on your last roll. Um, and Russia actually found some really cool thing about wrapping paper. Yeah, so besides difficulties in giving a gift, wrapping paper produces so much waste. According to NRDC, again, 25 million tons of garbage is produced between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve, accounting for 25% of the waste generated in a year. That's one out of 12 months generating 25% of the waste that is meant to be throughout 12 months. I know these numbers are like shocking and terrifying, but if we all work to choose gifts that are not wasteful, gifts that Anne suggests, we can all make a difference. That's for sure. Yeah, someone suggested, um, you know, recycle boxes or not wrapped, but gift bags. I, I do love gift bags. Um, send fruit baskets to friends, Amazon um, gift cards. You can use newspapers as um, gift wrap. I, I did want to start doing that this year. Huh. Great. You guys have some great ideas. So some people might be feeling a little lonely this year, especially if they're used to big families gathering, you know, together. So grow your immediate family. You can do that. With pets, you know, I mean, not grabbing just anybody to live with you, but you know, having some pets, but keep in mind that, you know, the quarantine will be over or this pandemic will be over. So if you are getting any pet pets, just make sure that you will be able to take care of them even afterwards. Um, so I, I show you this little picture. My, my husband is definitely the pet person. 
Um, so we got a couple of new tanks at home with these little golden snails and the little blue shrimps and they are so fun to watch. They don't get out of the tank, which is the nice part. Um, and so we kind of keep them contained and, you know, just watch them and, and uh, you know, see them swim and see them eat every day. It was fun. All right. So other festive activities. Um, what festive activities can you still carry out safely during this pandemic? Someone said going on walks to see lights, like Christmas lights, um, putting up Christmas decorations, drive around and look at lights, being outdoors away from others. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Puzzles. Puzzles, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, so you definitely mentioned a lot of them and. Um, I know sometimes we decorate the house because there are visitors coming, but do it for yourself this year. Um, you know, if you put a tree up, keep that, you know, keep putting that tree up. So, you know, at least you change your scenery, even at home. Um, decorating the house, you know, some religious traditions, keep that, or even writing cards. I, I don't know how many of you still write cards. So some, I know a lot of people don't do that anymore, but writing, like actually handwriting um, holiday cards. It, it can be a lot of fun and it really adds a personal touch. Uh, and people still like to get real mail, you know, even though we have a lot of emails and a lot of different ways to contact each other, you know, still try that real mail. It makes a difference. One said make video of Christmas tree and then set up and complete tree as the video compilation can be put on YouTube if mishaps happen. <laughs> that's oh, pretty great. That's funny. Yeah, for sure. It makes a great YouTube video. Um, so some people also like to do volunteer opportunities. And there are a lot of non-traditional volunteer opportunities that you know I want you to consider if, if you're that person. Um, a lot of people living alone and definitely feeling um, really lonely these days or since March. And so um, call up a person that's living alone just to chat. Uh, there might be people that the senior center knows of that need somebody to just call and chat maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks, um, you know, to see how they're doing and then they feel connected. Uh, they may not be, but then, then there are people who may not be as, um, uh, you know, feeling that easy to use social media or feeling that easy to use technology. So even just having a phone call with them, showing them how to use the app on their on their smartphone or how to use uh, how to chat with somebody, video, make a video call um, with a family member can make a whole world of difference uh, for, for them. So um, or, you know, just be available for tech support. You know, and say, hey, just call me if you're trying and it didn't work out, then, you know, be that person that you can be a support. If you do have some extra time, you know, because sometimes we are spending a lot of time preparing for the holidays. So if you have some extra time, make sure you're kind to yourself. Do something you really enjoy. Um, start a puzzle. Somebody had mentioned that. Um, or pick up an instrument that you haven't touched in a while. Uh, pick up a hobby that you didn't have time to do in the past, like sewing, knitting, crocheting, carpentry. Um, any other ideas? What do you think you can do with extra time? So we have um, car repair, oh, <laughs> puzzle okay. or puck. Um, I, I, for me personally, I think I, I love the idea of volunteering because I was actually looking for volunteer opportunities last night and I, I went on hands on, which is like the, you know, the, the center right here for Sacramento. And there were so many volunteer opportunities um, to write cards for senior um, centers. So it, it made me sad, but it, it did, you know, it's true. People, people are feeling alone during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Car maintenance. Cleaning the garage, have a spa day. Yeah. 
You can have a pumpkin spice candle on the side. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right, you guys have great ideas. Pool spa with herbal tea. Sounds relaxing. Yeah. Very nice. Yes, please. You know, I know we've talked about this in other Zoom into Wellness too, is the mind, body, spirit, and, and holiday times can be very stressful times. Um, and so definitely take some time for yourself. This is the year that you can really relax because you may not need to do a lot of other things for other people. So do things for yourself, enjoy it, have some fun. Um, still connect with family if that is what you like, but there are a lot of different virtual ways that you can do that. So thank you so much for joining us today and um, really wish you and your family a happy and healthy holiday season. And I hope you enjoyed this webinar. <laughs>